Hi, I'm James, and in today's video I am working on this, which is a ASUS VivoBook 14 uh, X415EA, or as it is sold here in the UK, a R465EA. And the first thing I need to do is turn the laptop over, and we are going to be uh, looking at how to replace some components and also to upgrade the RAM and SSD. So our first task is to go around the base and we have a total of 10 screws to remove. These are different lengths uh, depending which hole they go into. So I will be placing them off to the side and just arranging them in the same positions that I have removed them from so that I get everything back in the correct positions. With screws removed, our next job then is to take a plastic pry tool and we are going to take this to the back of the laptop and just press in where the base meets the sort of upper part of the chassis or the palm rest and just try and generate a little bit of a gap there. With that done, I'm then going to, I may use two of these in fact, just to uh, make things a little easier, pressing one in and then using the second to begin unclipping down the side. We are then going to just work our way along, gently pressing the pry tool in to release the little clips down this side. You want to sort of press down and angle inward slightly, and then we will do the same on the other side. Starting towards the rear, that pops up a little more easily, so then we can work our way along this side. And then along the front. Gently levering the base up and then let's work our way along the back as well. Once inside and with the base placed to one side we can see the funny cooling arrangement of this laptop where we have uh, actually a channel in the base of the machine and then this sort of long almost wind tunnel between the fan and heatsink. In terms of upgradability we have the M2 2280 uh, PCIe SSD up here and we also have a DIMM slot here. So this machine has 4 gigs of memory soldered to the board, but we are going to expand this to 8 gigs with a second uh, 4 gig stick. Um, you could, in theory, put, say, a 16 or potentially even 32 gigabyte stick in here, but in this case, we're going to go with an additional 4. We also have the wireless card here, which has a single antenna. Uh, so you could in theory replace that, but you only have that one antenna, so it's questionable how worthwhile it is doing that. So our first job is going to be to disconnect the battery. Uh, this is always not necessarily essential when working on the RAM and SSD. Uh, you can skip it, but really there's little reason to do so. It does prevent the risk of accidentally powering the machine on or things being electrically alive while you're working on it, so I always recommend it. And basically we push this little metal clip upwards and then we can just unclip on each side the battery connector. If we were looking to replace the battery then it is held in place with three screws and I will include uh, links to this battery and all the other parts being used in the description below if you need any of them. And with those three screws removed we can then lift the battery up and slide it out from under this little clip and then to replace is simply a case of slotting it back into position and placing it down over those lugs. We will reconnect it at the end, obviously. 
Uh, but for now, our next job is the memory. Installing the memory is very easy. We simply take our module and push it into the slot, angled slightly up, push it in firmly, and press down into position. This is a DDR4-3200 module, uh, and that will expand the system memory up to 8 gigabytes. The SSD was one of the most disappointing aspects of this machine when I looked at it in the review, and we can find the review linked as well. Um, and basically, uh, as well as being a small 128 gigabyte drive, it simply didn't have very good performance, particularly in terms of writes. So we are going to just peel this sticker back a little, and using our Phillips screwdriver, undo the screw here. That will then allow the SSD to lift up and we can gently slide it out and we will then take our replacement, slot it into the M2 connector, press it down and screw it down into position. You'll see here also there is a gap for a 2.5 inch hard drive. ASUS do not provide the uh, connector for this, but I will put a link in the description to where you can find the ribbon cable and holder for that drive if you wish to add one. It's a case of simply connecting here and routing the cable through. And so with that done, uh, I will obviously be clean installing Windows 10 onto this. Uh, you could also clean install Windows 11 uh, or clone the data from your existing drive. But in this case, I'm going to go for clean Windows install. We are going to make sure we have refitted the screws for the battery. And then all that's left to do is for us to reconnect the battery connector, making sure we push down the little metal connector to hold that in place. Now this can be a good time to power on the machine and make sure it recognises the new RAM and the SSD. I've already done this however, so all that is left to do is to take our back panel line it up and press around the edges to clip it on and then refit the screws. So I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, do let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if this helped you upgrade your machine. Hit like if it did and hit subscribe if you would like to see more videos as we post them. Thanks for watching.